Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. If you'll notice on screen, I'm going to pick this thing up on screen right here. Front page of the Oregonian. Sunday's Oregonians today. It's at Oregon's new school boss. The state's entire public education system and its super board will fall under the sway of the governor. And uh, and then adding to that is that Salem approved edu uh, educational re-overhauls, if you will. The Oregon House and Senate passed 14 bill pack package that critics say doesn't address schools' budget problems. But it goes on and on and on. But this is historic, folks. This is very, very historic. And uh, with me today, my guest is Steve Buell. You've known Steve. He said on the, here, from a local standpoint, he said on, as he's been a school board member at Portland Public Schools. Uh, he's been a teacher for a number of years. You know, you've seen him on the show many times over. And what we're going to do, we're going to discuss with him just what does this mean to Oregon? More specifically, what it means to kids. And more specifically, what it means to poor kids again. Okay? So with that, I'm going to, Steve, welcome aboard. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice that. to be here as oh, always. Fantastic. So what we're going to do, the first 30 minutes, we're going to talk from a state perspective from the standpoint of what the legislature did. And then, the, then we're going to take a break. And then the second half hour, we're going to talk from a local standpoint, Portland Public Schools strategic plan for 2011 to, 2000, to 2016 and uh, focus on what counts, okay? And that's from, uh, there was a statement by Superintendent Carol Smith we're going to talk to you about, but that second half hour, we're going to focus, if you will, on Portland Public Schools, the largest school system, if you will, in the state of Oregon, okay? So with that, Steve, I, I'm looking at the, the this overhaul, if you will, and there, there are several points there, and if you don't mind, I'd, I'd like for you just to go, I'll just go through each one of them. And then you can respond accordingly. Okay. okay sounds All right? good. Let's just do that. And I've got the I've got the I, listings I'm, right well, here. I hope there's enough meat there to get through a half an hour. Well, there's I, not I, a lot of meat is, there I, except I know, for the kindergarten one. I, I, well, we may have to come back. The kindergarten one. <laughs> okay. Okay. The first one that was on the on the on the mark there that was a, these were highlights of the bills approved Tuesday and, and the way to the governor's office, which he, by the way I'm sure he'd probably sign off on all of these things if well. Yeah, he said he'd sign off on them if they passed them. Exactly. Abolishing the elected office of state superintendent and presently uh, superintendent. That's Castile. Susan Castile is sitting in that particular position. Uh, let's talk about that. What do you think about that? Well, they they're not going to elect her. They're not going to elect her. And they're really not abolishing the office so much as they're just making it appointed. So the governor is now going to really appoint the like person. a deputy because he's the superintendent yeah, now, right? Yeah, and he's going to appoint the deputy to run it. Right. And he uh, so it's no longer elected. Right, right. So I guess it's fine if you like the governor and you're going to get somebody with those uh, of that political persuasion. But what about if you don't like the governor and you get somebody of a little different political persuasion? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I always kind of like to vote myself. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's my understanding also, too, that nothing happens until 2014 unless uh, Superintendent Castile quits. Yeah, unless she, she resigns. resigns yeah? yeah, unless she kind resigns. It looked like there was a hint in the in the article in today's paper as if to say she will resign. You know, it's like she'll, so she agreed with some of his policy and his philosophy about the whole issue of education, if you will. What, I don't what's know that, where what's going to happen. Well, I'm predicting. Yeah, that if she doesn't happen. resign, then then and he has to run again he, next to the in order year. to be the superintendent. Yeah. Somebody else might yeah. do that. So how do they go about tweaking this stuff? I mean, it was this legislature that basically talked and lobbied and everything else to, to this whole issue of coming up with was a historical plan, if you will. This is the first time in the in the history of this country, if you will, that something like this has happened, where you got both entities under one entity. Well, there's a couple other states that, that have. But I understand yeah. this, they can appoint that, the superintendent it, it, or the board, but not both. That's what I'm saying. That's well, what I'm the, saying. The, it, it, in a way, I guess it is historical because... You went back originally, the governor was a superintendent for, I guess, five years or so, and then right. way back at the formation right. of the, Con the Oregon Constitution, mm -hmm. he, he switched them out. So I, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure you can actually even do what they've done. Mm -hmm. We'll see. That'll be interesting to see. I don't think it has any impact any place except on the legislature, really. I mean, if you're going to bring in somebody to do the same type of thing that she's doing now, what impact does it have? I mean, when they ran for state superintendent of public instruction, who who knew what their their plans were anyhow? I mean, it was always Did she have an educational background, Susan Castillo? No, she did. She, she was a legislator. She was just a legislator. And, uh, but when they, 
when you when they run for super superintendent of public instruction, who's known what their their platform really was? What is their platform? Uh, I mean, everybody kind of in that whole group of people in the legislature has the almost an identical platform in a way for public schools. And basically, it's a lot of the reform movement stuff that's coming down. You know, let's get the test scores up, achievement, close the achievement gap. Uh, I, I don't think it'll have much impact, really. You don't think so? No, no. It'll, the only impact it might have, it might have some impact on the union, hmm. on the teachers' union, the OEA. They, they didn't agree no, with it. No, no, they didn't all. agree they with it at all. And, and uh, so it could impact them to some degree because there's a lot, you know, there's all that anti union activity throughout the country, Wisconsin going after it. So if you get in there, somebody who's anti union, it was pretty hard to elect somebody who was anti-union because the OEA could kick in enough money to keep somebody who was, you know, to not keep somebody going into that position who was, who was anti-union. But uh, I don't think in the long run, other than the union, it might have, it's going to have much impact on the schools. Well, then direct, let, let's just say, for instance, maybe the legislature now, kind of like the, the other new school boards, if you will, because in all due respect, they're going to have to address the issue of failure rates and and that other business, and then what about charters and all that other good stuff? I'm just well, I'm, yeah. Theoretically, they're theoretically they're, they're addressing it now. Right. Supposedly, right. They're, okay. they're, they're they have plans to address those, and they the the State Department has plans for stuff, but mm -hmm. but it doesn't have it doesn't have much positive impact. It has okay. a lot of negative impact, okay. which we'll talk about as we get up really in the second half of the show about the testing. Okay. And I don't think it's going to change. Okay, much. we'll do more. But I'm predicting today that uh, Susan Castile is going to, she's going to step she's down. Gonna step, she's going to step down. Sounded like it in the article. Yes, then. yes. She, I think she's going to step down. Okay, fine. Okay, number two here. Creating a preschool to graduate school board overseen by the governor. Okay, creating a preschool to graduate. I mean, from, from beginning to end. Okay. What do you think about that piece? Well, he's already over the the colleges, okay. basically, right. and, and he's already kind of over the preschool. It kind of adds the the middle stuff. Uh, like I, I don't think it'll, that'll has going to have much effect e either. I mean, I'm going to say that almost in every one of these bills, except the kindergarten bill. There, um, what's going to what's going to be different? You think he's going to get a new new staff? I mean, it's my understanding he's going to go out for a search, if you will for that deputy superintendent's office. I was kind of interesting because I was saying, well, here's Susan Castile, you know, superintendent Susan Castile, and if they make the deal, and he's, she sort of agrees with him, the philosophy and the like, you would think, well, okay, fine, why don't you just go on and just talk about this piece? Well, why did they do that? The search piece is kind of interesting to me yeah. because if you go across the country, you can't find anybody really who's been really successful with school. Okay. There, no one. So who are you going to search? Who are you going to search for? You can bring in some guy from Duluth, or some woman from Duluth. What have they done? What are they going to do different? I mean, it's the, the whole. There's the whole way the states approach this this year, and the legislatures approach this. The idea is that we can do things to make this education a lot better. But the things that they talk about, and the things that they talk about nationally. They're not making it better. They're making it worse. Oh, really? And, yeah. And, and and so who are you going to bring in? Who's really been successful? Nobody can. I, I remember years ago, and this is kind of a little off the topic, but years ago we hired a guy when I was in the school board and we were looking for a superintendent, and that's when we picked profit. Okay, man. Okay. And, and, uh, and, and I think universally, Aaron, anybody will tell you that he's the best superintendent they've had for Almost with not an educational background. With no educational background, really. And but he was he he had been a superintendent, so he had that background. But he wasn't a school teacher. But it was his attitude mm -hmm. about the importance of all children that made the difference. Mm -hmm. And also, it was his attitude about solving problems. Let's go out and solve the problems that we have in our schools, and that made the difference. But the thing I remembered about it is I asked the guy who was running the search. We had a guy from Portland State who was running the search. I don't remember his name. Nice man. And I said, okay, of the 50 top superintendents in the country, which probably really wasn't one, considered one of the 50 top. Mm -hmm. And I said, of the 50 top, how many do you know that are really child-oriented, child-focused, focused on you know, kids. And I remember he leaned back kind of in his chair and he thought, and he said, maybe one. And that's about how, it, that's how it, I, 
try and find one now. Hmm. Hmm. And, and so you're going to go over this national search and come up with who? Hmm. Hmm. What changes are you going to make? Okay. I mean, Good. you're locked in a lot of the bad stuff from the federal government anyway. Okay. We'll be talking about more of that in the future, yeah, second, I'm sure. Yeah, second, okay. well, second half. Exactly. Okay. Allowing students to transfer to other districts. Now, that's an interesting one. We've been having this issue locally. We'll talk a little bit that more about that. That is interesting. Now, why is it all of a sudden? What's that, that, what's that I'm not to sure that has a lot of impact, but it is really interesting. Portland Public Schools had a transfer policy right. where you could transfer from any school to any other school, basically. Mm -hmm. That was their, and, and they put that in, oh, six, seven years ago, five years ago or so. Wouldn't that and so, so you could, no, not really. No limitations. Not really. You could transfer from, because the feds tell you if you've got a, if you've got a, a school that is a Title I school and they're behind, that you got to let the kids transfer out. Mm -hmm. So you could transfer from Marshall to Lincoln, from Madison to Lincoln, from Roosevelt to Lincoln, and what happened was that as kids started to transfer for the better programs that Portland had built in, the other schools began to really go downhill. And so you had terrific problems in Portland with a very similar policy to this. And I, I was pretty surprised that they didn't, I didn't hear anybody mention it. Maybe, you know, I, I wasn't a privy to the discussions, of mm -hmm. course, but but Portland did this policy. Now we're doing it in a state. So you're in, uh, you're in Portland Public Schools and hey, Tualatin down here has mm -hmm. got a better, mm -hmm. you can get a better education you can in a lot of Portland schools. So if I'm at Marshall, no no longer Marshall, well, let's say I'm at, at uh, Franklin, do I want to transfer to Tualatin? Mm -hmm. Will Tualatin allow me to transfer? Who will they allow to transfer? Are they going to have transfer rules? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, this is kind of, this is Pandora's box in a way. Well, you know, that, as, part of the transfer rules is, hey, that kid's a good halfback, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that kid's 6'9". Yeah, right. Well, yeah, I think we'll yeah. let him transfer. But how about this? And what about the sendbacks? Mm. In other words, a lot of times you get kids who transfer into your school and they're misbehaved and they're disruptive yeah, right. and stuff. Yeah. And you know, let's get them out of here. Okay. So they what get out of Tualatin there? sending them back? Uh, is I that mean, part of the deal? Uh, who knows? Mm -hmm. what part of the deal is mm -hmm. and, and who's going to allow who to transfer and is it then is so as you get less kids they state sends you less money mm -hmm. that's what happened in portland in the poorer schools in portland they got less kids so they had less money mm -hmm. now they always send them a little more money per kid evidently but they had less money well is that going to happen throughout the state now mm -hmm. we're now going to have these really good school districts and these really poor school districts, and the kids out of the poor school districts now want to get out. Used to be you went in your own district, you had to go deal with it, you want to well move. Wow. But boy, that's, this is Pandora's box. No, that's going to be interesting. It's okay. going to be real interesting that's another one. what okay. happens there. Okay. Another, here's another point there. Letting online charter schools expand and letting colleges sponsor charter schools. I don't have so much problem with the colleges sponsoring charter schools. Okay. I know the OEA is really sounded like they were really against that. They just don't want more charter schools. You go to Washington, they don't have Now what charter. does that mean? Is a charter school what? Charter college school charter gets school or something or what? Charter school gets money from the state. Right. But they don't the have child. to follow all the rules. Right. Okay. And, so and so what what kind of a model do you think that a college will come up with? Like we're Boy, gonna, I don't gonna, know. Gonna, I, do I don't know. Do you a college degree or a college degree uh, program or something? Well, What's you have that Jefferson going to that's that. That's another deal. But, that, uh, but, yeah, but I mean, they could use a model like Jefferson is yeah. using now with the uh, with the early they college. That. They could do that. Yeah, yeah oh, sure. You could start. Them, you could start allowing kids to pick up college credits, credit in yeah. the high school okay. and stuff and do that. And, and that'd be for some type of some kids. That'd be very. Uh, Are they pressed uh, for they, money they, too? They I mean. Well, yeah. The colleges are they pressed yeah. for money? Well, if you have a charter charge? school, then you get the money from the state. At least right. a certain per amount of the money from the state. So, and you already are set up to do it. Hmm. So maybe it's going to be cheaper. The second half of that was yeah. What about uh, online charter schools? Well, online charter schools. What about here's how case? I kind of think about online charter schools. Pick any kid you know. You think it's a good idea for him to sit home on the computer? Doing his schoolwork all day at home with no other. Well, that's homeschool. What about homeschool? Is, with, that, is that the with same? No that's... other. Yeah, I don't know. It's not too much different in homeschool. But in homeschool, the parents really are supposed to. Even though in homeschool in Oregon, there's 